Hey guys, it's Car Guy 11. Welcome to another Car Guy 11 live show. Uh, doing it earlier today, uh, Saturday morning, uh, trying that out. Uh, there wasn't too much news this week, so um, didn't do the Wednesday evening one. Uh, that is usually at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so I just moved it to Saturday and um, during my normal upload time. So hopefully some of you guys um, are awake <laughs> and can uh, still join. Uh, we'll we'll see how the uh, turnout is. Uh, it is a little early, I understand, but just wanted to get the video out for you guys. And um, you could also, of course, watch it on replay. Um, it's available on podcasts. If you search for it on iTunes, search for Car Guy 11. Um, you can play it in your car. And of course, you could play it back on YouTube. But um, yeah, there is a, a few um, Corvette news stories. And then also, I, I, I asked if anyone had questions, wanted to talk about anything. Um, on Instagram and Facebook and Instagram, uh, you could follow me at car guy underscore 11 and Facebook, just search for car guy 11 YouTube. And, uh, you could definitely, uh, write me anytime comment and I will answer it either in this stream or the next one. So I did get a few on, on Instagram the other day. So, uh, let me just start with those real quick. And then as people come on, uh, definitely introduce yourself and tell me where you're watching from, because that's always interesting. So I know it's uh, it's probably real early on the West Coast for you guys, but um, out here on the East Coast, it is 10 a.m. So um, Tommy, Tommy is here, uh, but sleepy. Yeah, this is early for Tom Gear, but uh, thanks for joining us, Tom. But anyway, couple couple um questions on instagram um mike says hey that thing got a hemi and i posted a picture of the uh c7 corvette on there so i know it was joking but th that's pretty funny so no it doesn't have a hemi um lt1 baby and then i got one from car girl 11 can i drive it like again she's referring to the c7 so uh uh, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> uh, also got one from Nigel. Uh, what's the first thing I should change in my 2015 Trailhawk? Um, well, I would say um, I did a number of mods. Definitely check out on my channel. I think the biggest one that you'll notice um, is the headlights. Uh, I really like the LED headlights uh changing them from the halogen and the 15s came with the halogens no matter what trim level trail hawk you got so i would um recommend and i just posted an update video on um ox beams newest led bulbs for the trail hawk um the previous video i made they discontinued those bulbs and they made some improvements with the new bulb so definitely worthwhile and it's very inexpensive to do that I also changed out my fog lights as well. So uh, fog light and headlight to LEDs, huge improvement, uh, big change. It makes it look a lot classier as well. Um, the second thing that makes a big difference, I think, is the wheel spacers. Uh, I did the one and a quarter inch wheel spacers, gives it a much more aggressive look, pushes those tires out. Um, just, just. Um, up to the fender line, uh, maybe even a little past. So it's pretty cool. So those two things I think make the biggest uh, change. Uh, another one uh, from M. Rich Jr. Interior LED lighting upgrade for the 2019 Cherokee Trailhawk suggestions. Um, I have not changed out the LED, the uh, or the regular bulbs in the interior of mine. Uh, I have done it in the past in my Audi A4. I've switched them out. And also on the C7 Corvette, I have, um, while they were mostly LEDs, except for the ones in the hatch area, they left uh, and I had to change them out to LEDs. So I, I would normally do that, but I have not found um, 
any kits or really people being successful at it. I've heard there's errors that you get. And, um, uh, you know, it, it's a little touchy because you're changing the resistance. So uh, I know with my Audi, it was pretty good. I left one incandescent bulb uh, somewhere in there so it would um, keep that resistance. Uh, I think it was in a glove box or something. So you do have to be careful when a system's not designed for LEDs because of the resistance. So um, I haven't, like I said, I haven't um, found a good kit or really um, investigated it enough for me to make a video and try anything. But definitely, if you're watching, uh, let me know if if there is something. I'm definitely worth um, uh, you know willing to try it. So. But anyway, guys, um, yeah, thanks for the comments on Instagram. Again, you can also comment on Facebook and, uh, of course, in the chat below. So uh, Cargirl 11's here. Hi from Rainy PA. Yeah, it was rainy, and now uh, now it's actually the sun's coming up. So um, that's good. Looks like it rained mostly overnight. So uh, thanks for joining us, Cargirl 11. And then um, I do have... Oh, Matt Rosenthal's on. Hey, Matt. Thanks for joining. Um, I have a few Corvette stories, or actually several, and uh, I want to get into that. And, of course, everybody likes talking about Corvette, C8, C7, whatever you want to talk about. So definitely put your uh, comments in the chat. But the first one is actually <laughs> pretty exciting. I don't think it's going to be uh, true, but uh, there's a rumor that the C8 will make a surprise debut at the Detroit Auto Show on January 14th, which is a week away now. And I am going to the show for the media days, so I'll be there on the 14th. Um, this is a rumor. I, I, I kind of find it unlikely because there's really no press conference schedule for Chevy. And I feel like if they were going to do it, they would have done it like the night before the show as, at a private event. But uh, as of right now, they don't have anything scheduled. So I'm not sure when this would happen. Um, and then, of course, there were talks that there were going to be uh, delayed until summer or late spring and have a no, their own private event. So the past couple of weeks, I've been talking about those delays. Um, so I don't know. I, I just thought it was funny. Um, all of a sudden now, it's changing course, and, and it is going to be delayed. I would love it to be delayed there, because like I said, I am going, and um, it would be really exciting to see. And I'm not sure I would be invited to a private event. So what do you guys think of that one? Um, let's see. The next story, also with the C8 Corvette, it's showing a patent for intelligent power doors. So now it looks like it's going to have some sort of some sort of power uh, function. I don't believe it's going to be uh, flip-up doors or gull wing doors or any kind of Ferrari or Lambo-like doors. So I think it looks like to me in this diagram, it's just going to be standard doors that open themselves or close themselves. Um, maybe they're going to be larger because of that mid-engine design. Maybe they're going to be heavier. So... Um, that's maybe why they need a power. It looks like they're taking into account air, uh, wind, <laughs> wind drag. So um, if it's a windy day or something, um, I don't know. It, I don't know. It's just it's pretty neat. Um, it looks like it's going to be a lot of technology in this car. Maybe that's why uh, they are saying they're delayed by six months with electrical issues. There's going to be a lot of electronics and a um, lot of things to work out there. Uh, so, we'll, so we'll just have to see what reports are true. Uh, Tom Gear said, let's go to New York this year. Yeah, I'm definitely thinking about that one as well. 
haven't been to the media. Well, actually, I've never been to New York Auto Show, so I, I would like to go, um, especially if that is the last major auto show of the year, um, and it's possible Corvette would be shown there. Uh, also, though, Detroit is going to have two shows this year, and they're moving the January show to June. So this next week's show is the last auto show in the winter in January for Detroit, and they're now going to be moved to June from now on. So this year, there'll be two, and then every year after this, it'll always be in June. Uh, I have mixed feelings about that because... You know, there's a lot going on in the summer um, as far as other events and, you know, that's car season, stuff like that. And it was kind of nice after Christmas, after the holidays to look forward to something car related in the midst of winter and the snow where you can't really drive much and there's not much going on. So that was kind of exciting for me uh, to have something in the winter to um you know, something to do, something to report on, something to talk about. So that's, that's, I have mixed feeling about it, but uh, I probably it's competing with the CES show as well. And we will, um, Wednesday night, I'm, I plan on doing another one of these Car Guy 11 lives, and we'll, we'll talk about what's revealed at the CES show in Las Vegas. And I know Tom Gear is going to that. So um, we'll see what he, he finds there. He also says the new seven liter Ford motor rumored for Chicago this year. Um, possibly. I, I don't, you know, I haven't heard many reports about it lately and I know uh, they were thinking about using it, you know, for Raptor or uh, the heavy duty pickups. And um, so I haven't heard reports lately though. So hopefully, but everything's moving to these eco boosts. And um, really, while well, the five liter is the only uh, V8 they have left, so I'm not sure, but we're we're hoping we're hoping uh, that's going to be tough though to meet any kind of fuel economy targets with that large of an engine. So we'll see, we'll see. Maybe they'll do the uh, the four cylinder mode displacement. Uh, reduction stuff on those engines uh, like the LTs and LSs do from GM. So um, that could certainly help. But but we'll see. We'll see. Um, I do have uh, more stories here. Let me see. Okay. Let me share my screen again. All right. So another report on the C8. Uh, GM trademarked the Zora name, which, again, um, I don't know why they did it previously. Now they uh, updated the, the uh, trademark. And um, I'm not sure what this would be for. Maybe like the top model, possibly like the hybrid version of it. Um, you know the 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 most expensive version. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is because I think they have a good naming scheme right now. I don't think they should get away from that unless this is a special model. So anyway, uh, we don't know too much, but just they did file for the patent. So all this stuff indicates the C8 is coming. It's uh, coming soon. It's just, uh, it's it's a matter of time here. I, it's going to be this year. We just don't know when. So, But uh, also, I do want to talk about some car sale news from 2018. Um, I saw a couple reports this week about just total car sales and also cars that didn't sell well that should have. Um, and I thought this was funny and I wanted to go through these because, um, there's some good ones on the list. So let me share this. All right. These are the top, uh, great cars. Nobody bought in 2018 and starting on the list, we have the Fiat 124 Spider. Um, 
this isn't too surprising because no <laughs> nobody buys fiats in general. So um, not too surprised to see that one. This one, another one, Alfa Romeo 4C. Also, you know, not many alphas sold. They don't even have these on the lots much. 238, not too surprising. Although um, I did take this one for a test drive and um, I liked it, but I didn't like the driving position. The seat was, um, couldn't adjust it properly. Um, it, it was like you were hunched over and stuff. So uh, I, I bet this car is not going to be here long. I'm sure they're going to replace that soon. Uh, oh, Lincoln Continental, only eighty-seven fifty-eight. It's a nice car. It's a big car. No one's buying sedans now, but I do have uh, another story on that. Um, and I'm sure you guys saw this. It's a little bit old, this story, but they're bringing back the suicide doors on it, the coach doors. And I think this is a great idea to make the sedan interesting again i think people would get on board with this and you know consider them uh unfortunately they're only producing 80 which is nothing so it's not going to get a lot of um people aren't going to see it too often so i don't know i think they have an opportunity to you know, make the sedan interesting again, cater to uh, the luxury buyer, and, um, you know, they could sell more of these. They could definitely draw more interest to the Continental, uh, which is, it's a nice car. I mean, uh, it's just, you know, not a lot of people are interested in sedans anymore. So, I don't know. Hopefully, these 80 will sell out pretty well, and then, um, It'll draw more interest to the Continental itself. Uh, Cargo 11 says, oh, the 4C was rough to test drive by the firewall. Yes, um, she was with me on the drive. And yeah, it, it, it's it's more like a go-kart. Uh, it's a mid-engine car. So you're sitting right, um, you know, two-seater right against that um, the firewall. So um, I don't know. I mean, it. it it was it was fast. It's faster than like a Miata or something like that. But it's it's kind of a different car. But um, all right, let's keep moving on this list. The next one. Oh, the Porsche Cayman and Boxster. I love these. I love the Cayman, and um, only five thousand two hundred seventy six sold. I really think. The four-cylinder turbo is hurting the sales of this car now. Uh, if they would have kept the six-cylinder, I think it would it would do, be doing better. I don't have the past sales numbers, but I, I, I seem to think that that is really hurting it, the four-cylinder turbo. Let's hope that the GT4 version that's coming will keep the six-cylinder, uh, and I will definitely be interested in that car then. Acura NSX, only 170 sold. Um, I don't know. The pricing is is pretty high on this. I know it has a lot of technology, uh, but I think all the original owners are not jumping on board to hybrid. They they kind of wanted to keep tor keep closer to to their original version of this car. So. Um, also, dealers aren't stocking these. I think they're order only. So, um, yeah, only 170 of those. Mazda Miata still, I mean, it's selling better than the Fiat version, 89.71. Um, great car. Um, again, it's a niche market, but I think, um, you know, people... It's too small, probably for for today's uh, buyer, you know. But you know, good car though. Steve says NSX too costly, and Tom says it's the last great decade of car has been saying that for a few years. Uh, yes, everything's moving to the hybrid electrics, but I I think we're not going to be disappointed with the electric 
performance models. Even the Model 3 now has a performance uh, model. And um, uh, I haven't seen too many reviews on it, but you know, it they're going to make performance electrics, performance hybrids. So I, I think I, just wait. You know, it's just early days. Uh, they're going to start with the economy side, the fuel, um, saving fuel. Uh, the environmental side, but then the performance aspect will come back. So um, Steve says, give me a C8 any day. <laughs> and the C8, Steve, I think it's going to be hybrid at some point as well. There's going to be a hybrid model. I, um, I'm really sure of that. So, all right. What else we got on this list? Nissan GTR, only 538 sold. Oh, this car, the pricing went through the roof. Doesn't say here, but it's like 120,000 or more. Uh, these started out at like 70 grand when they came out. Uh, they're pricing themselves out of the market. Uh, and it's a very old design at this point. So not too surprising. I think people are over them. Um, there's you know, they, they're still holding their value used, but um, I can't see a lot of people buying them new at this point until they get a new model. 370Z, also extremely old, 3468 sold. Um, yeah, extremely, extremely old. So I think uh, once they redesign this one, uh, we'll get it back on track. Steve says, yes, the C8 will be like this poor spider hybrid, super fast. Yep, the 918, that's that's what exactly they're going to go for with the hybrid, a performance hybrid. Okay, Lexus LC, 1979. This is a nice car, very different styling, futuristic styling. I'm kind of surprised about this because... Um, you know, it, it's different. It's new. I think a lot of people would be interested in it. I just don't know the production numbers. I don't know if they're easily found on lots or if you have to order them or what. Um, maybe, and this was also the first year. It just came out. So maybe it just needs another year and it'll start catching on more. It is kind of expensive. Um, almost start uh, starting just under 100 grand. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think. It's an interesting car for sure, styling-wise. There's nothing like it on the road. So I would think this is going to improve. The next one, these two are a little bit old again. Toyota 86 and the um, BRZ. Well, I get, they're, they're only saying the um, Toyota version on this article. So 41, 46. These are... Uh, towards the end of their life cycle. They are supposed to get redesigned soon. Um, they never were high selling cars, but, and that, I think that's a little bit due to the price as well. They're getting close to 30 grand and not a lot of power. And I know that's what their uh, story is, but um, it's kind of tough to compete at that power level and price. So I think these will uh, come back with the, um, you know, with the redesigns, uh, Tom Gear says, uh, Toyota is, he read that Toyota is bringing back the MR2. I did hear that as well. Not sure if that's going to be a ragtop version of the Supra, something like that, because, you know, MR2 was also mid-engine. Um, I don't know. I can't see them de designing three different smaller sports cars i think one has to be a convertible version of something either the 86 or the supra um but both of those are, are front engine as well so i don't think it'll be mid-engine um i'm i'm leaning toward a convertible version of either the 86 or the supra and of course the supra is based on the Z bmw z4 which is a convertible roadster so that could be that could be the MR2. All right, let's keep moving here. 
Um, and then anybody else on, I see there's a bunch of people on, so um, definitely say hi where you're watching from and you can participate in the chat. Uh, let's see, next is, oh, okay, the Subaru BRZ, BRZ is a separate, um, that's where they separate them, I guess, just, just because of the brands. Again, same thing here. It's selling a little better than the, uh, no, Toyota's selling a little better, okay. Um, but I think they'll improve in the next generation. Oh, Toyota Land Cruiser. Um, these are very expensive. Uh, this is an old school design. Uh, not too great on fuel economy. I don't. I didn't expect this one to be a high, high selling. It's very expensive. Thirty, uh, just over three thousand sold. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't think this will ever be a high selling vehicle. There's a Lexus version as well. Okay, here we go with Corvette. So, this is kind of interesting. Only eighteen thousand seven hundred sold now. This is this could be a little misleading. So, 2018 model year Corvette uh, was a very short model year. They they came out with the 2019 um, last spring. So, I'm not sure if, what they're counting if they're just counting model year 2018. Uh, but typically, Corvettes sell in the around thirty thousand range. If they counted both eighteen and nineteen, uh, that is a pretty big decrease. But also, it's the end of the model year, and of course, the C eight is coming out. So everyone's waiting for the C eight. Now you can get pretty great deals on the C seven right now, um, around twenty percent off sticker. So definitely, there's deals to be had if you like the C seven and it's a great platform. Um, this always happens at the end of the life of a model, though. So uh, that is kind of low, though. So I'm not sure uh, what you guys think about that. Um, but um, I think a lot of people are, are waiting for the C8 at this point. All right. What else we got? What else we got? Uh, Steve says, my baby is in winter storage. We'll go to the garage to sit with her for a while today. <laughs> she likes that. <laughs> yes, yeah, Steve, I, I'm in the same boat. Um, I know I know what you mean. Uh, it is actually turning out to be a real nice day here, um, warming up probably to 50 and the sun's out now. So I know I'm itching to get it out. And Tom agrees. He knows the feeling. All right, let's see. Uh, Volvo V90, only 491 sold. We all know wagons do not sell in the U.S., uh, even though enthusiasts um, and even though enthusiasts like it. So that's not too much of a surprise. Tom Gear also says he saw some vets out yesterday. Yeah, I mean, really, there's no salt on the ground. Um, it hasn't snowed since November. So... I mean, it's definitely possible to get the cars out. All right, the next one on the list here, Mini Cooper, uh, just under 10,000 sold. I don't know. I don't know too much about minis as far as their sales numbers. Um, that seems reasonable in my mind because I don't see a lot of people buying these, but it seems reasonable. BMW 2 Series. Uh, just over 9,000. Um, you know, I test drove the M2. Greg had an M2 on the channel. Um, good car. Um, uh, I think more more people are, are interested in a four-door, like the three series. This is a two-door. Um, and and I, the problem I have with it, if it's going to be a coupe, it should look like a coupe. This looks like a two-door a, a sedan, a two-door version of a sedan, and um, I think it should have more sportier styling for a two-door. That's my problem with it. Okay, next one here is BMW i8, only 772 sold. Well, we know this is a three-cylinder hybrid. 
and very expensive. So that uh, that's probably the story there. I I mean, not too surprising. Cool, cool, uh, cool looking though in the door. So, but that's the story. Okay, GTI. This is kind of surprising. Only sixteen thousand sold. I think the problem with GTI is the price. It's gotten pretty damn expensive. Uh, just under thirty grand for a golf, and um, I think that's limiting it. Um, in addition, just the uh, slower sales of of cars in general. Um, everyone's going to the SUVs. So, but yep, that's uh, that's on the list. One more Mercedes AMG AMG GT. Well. This is no surprise either. Very expensive car, and um, 1500 sold. Um, I don't know. Uh, I think uh, I think that's actually an, a reasonable number for that. But anyway, I think that, that finishes up that article. I see we're uh, just over a half hour here, so probably going to end it for today. But again, thanks for everyone joining me. And um, if you have any other questions or comments, put them in the comments of this video. And again, you could also comment on uh, Instagram and Facebook. You can even message me, but we could talk about anything you'd like. I expect to do one of these Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time for uh, we'll talk about the uh, reveals at CES and um, should be some some stuff there. The car makers are, are seeming to attend that pretty well. Uh, Steve says Corvette, most eye appealing. Yeah, um, we'll see what the final version of the C8 looks like. Uh, those ones I showed early in our video, uh, those renderings look pretty pretty decent. So excited for that. But all right, guys. Well, I hope everybody has a great week and weekend and. Please subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.